too, because I actually get you and I got to spend time with someone I've been wanting to interview yes. since 2012. He's from the Bay Area, but people he people know him nationally. Worldwide. The one and only Nick Walenda. He's yep. king of the wire, right? So you may have heard just a couple weeks ago it was announced he his next um, high wire experience stunt, I guess you would call yeah. it over a volcano in yes. Nicaragua. It's going to be broadcast live right here on ABC. It's an active volcano too. So the steps that he's having to take, Ugh. unbelievable. But we couldn't wait to have the chance to spend some time with him as he's packing his gear yeah. to head down south. So here is a look at part of our conversation. Let's go back to 2012. I will tell you where my family was. <laughs> we were all around the TV watching as Daredevil himself, Nick Walinda, took to the high wire over Niagara Falls. I still remember that. Here we are years <laughs> later. No, I bet you do pretty well. I've always wanted to chat with you. Here we are today. Now, I kind of envisioned that you'd be you know, up on the wire practicing, but there's a whole other element of getting ready for one of your walks that we're witnessing today. Yeah, you know what? There is so much that people don't realize that I, I have my hand in everything so being an executive producer from the budget to all of the filming locations of cameras to the type of cameras we're using including the packages that lead up to my special or my actual stunt um, I'm involved in every aspect and then not to mention all of the rigging so the rigging design the engineering finding the locations securing the locations it's it's a lot so I'm a little starstruck and it was so cool when we came in to meet you and to see this warehouse where you're housing everything and you said, hey, this is the wire that I walked, mm -hmm. you know, New York City in. This is where, talk about how many times is this for you as far as like big production wise, like Goodness. TV so specials? This is, my, this is my fifth TV special. Uh, of course, a lifetime of walking wires yeah. since I was, since before I was actually walking on earth, my mom was walking the wire with me while she was six months pregnant. Yeah. So <laughs> I've done it longer than I've been alive or longer than I've been on earth anyways. So tell me then when you go into now this, your fifth TV special with this, I, does it get any easier? This is going to be your longest, hardest one that you've done so far, but it's somewhat familiar? Yeah, I would tell you that the the walks get harder and harder. The permissions for the walks are getting easier and easier because now I have a proven track record. Talking about Niagara Falls, when I first went to get permission, I didn't realize that I had to change a law in the United States and one in mm -hmm. Canada that was over 100 years to get permission. So that was a process in yeah. itself. So again, now as I've built more of a track record, of course, my family history speaks for itself, but I also have my own my own history now. Yeah. So it's a little bit easier in that sense, but the productions get bigger and the walks get more and more challenging. Yeah. Carly was talking about being starstruck, talking about the wires. We're sitting here and you're pointing. This was the Times Square wire. This is the wire we're yeah. taking with us for the volcano. So I would tell you that every wire that I walk on uh, for each event is engineered specifically for that event. Of course, because it's safe to use a new wire every time, but also I have a high demand on my engineering team to walk the smallest cable possible to, to rig safely. So over the Grand Canyon in Niagara Falls, I walked on a cable about the size of a tennis ball, two inches in diameter. Well, now technology has advanced even since 2012, and I'll actually be walking on a cable that is only an inch and an eighth in diameter, which mm. is about the size of a golf ball. Again, tensions are higher, longer walk, higher uh, walk as well, but the cable has gotten smaller just because technology is on our side. Well, talk about the prep work too, because how much can you practice? I mean, this is a volcano. We don't have a volcano <laughs> sitting here in yeah. Florida where you can practice. I mean, it's, how much prep work can you really it is, do? It uh, is tricky. I've been training in, in one of my training warehouses where we actually have brought in uh, smoke machines that firemen use for training. We have an infrared camera on set because there's a chance you won't be able to see me or the camera lens won't be able to see me because those gases can get that thick. So we've been trying to recreate those gases. Part of that is training with my eyes closed. The challenge is the one thing I can't train for is where those gases are going to go, how they're going to shift, and then also the fact that they are a sulfuric gas, so they eat through anything. In fact, I brought a piece of half-inch half wire to uh, Messiah Volcano in Nicaragua, where I'll be walking about uh, six months ago, and we left it there for two months. After two months, I went back and grabbed that cable, and it literally crumbled in my hands. And then it's a volcano. The reality is we've seen on the news lately there have been several that have erupted, and the reality is that, that could happen. My biggest concern is it's okay if Nick Walenda's in harm's way, because that's what Nick Walenda does. It's about my team, though. There'll be over 350 people there on my team for this event, from production as well as riggers and engineers, and my entire, uh, again, my entire team plus family. So that is my biggest concern is their safety. You know, when hearing you talk, I mean, I'm, I, maybe you're like this, you're thinking, <laughs> 
Why? <laughs> what is it? How do you put in words? Of course, we know about your family history. Sure. Describe the draw that you have yeah, that keeps wanting you to do more. It's really tough to describe. I don't know whether it's just my family history. There's something inside of me that wants me to continue to do these big, massive projects. In fact, there are times throughout the process of getting permission and the rigging and the engineering and the planning and the, the you know the TV schedule and production and all, all of those elements where I'm like, man, I don't know if I want to do this anymore. And I, I said that to my wife about a month yeah. ago while we were really in the thick of this. And she's like, yeah, right. I don't believe you. You say that every time and then you come <laughs> up with something crazier. My goal is to inspire people to step out of their comfort zones. Um, and if I don't step out of mine, then how can I preach that to them? I'm, I'm actually writing a book right now on overcoming fear. And in order to overcome fear, I had to face fear. And I didn't realize fear was a reality until after that accident we had here in Sarasota a couple mm. of years ago, where we nearly lost my sister and other family members, and they were all severely injured. My family has lived by the words, the show must go on through thick and thin triumph and tragedy. That's what we do. And this walk for me is sort of closure on that of saying, okay, I have overcome that fear that was holding me back. I believe that society is held back by fear. I think so many people are, they go to work every morning miserable because it's what pays their bills and they're complacent and they go, well, at least my bills are paid. Rather than pursuing their dreams and stepping out of that comfort zone, if you will, I hope that those that watch me get that inspiration and they say, you know what, me too. I don't have to continue to do what I'm doing. I can, I can step out of where I am and go pursue my passions and dreams. Still to come, we have part two of our conversation with King of the Wire, Nick Belinda. Stay right there.